So hi, this is Rita Goldner again, author and illustrator of children's picture books and big time wildlife enthusiasts. And this is the second half of the Pangolin project and it's the painting. So if you did your Pangolin sketch in the first half of this project, the previous video, then you should be ready to transfer it onto a painting surface so you can paint your sketch and have a nice pangolin to celebrate National Wildlife Day, which is today. Thanks. For this painting, I'm using gouache, G-O-U-A-C-H-E, which is like watercolor only opaque, and you can use it thickly whereas watercolor, you're supposed to thin quite a bit with water. I've chosen to use blues and purples, a couple of different shades of blue and purple, but with a painting that is kind of realistic or representational, my opinion is the only thing you need to be careful about is the shape and the value, the value is the lightness or darkness of something. So if you paint an apple and you have the shape correct and one light side and one dark side, everyone is going to know it's an apple even if it's pink or purple or blue. So the same thing with the pangolin. I'm saying that the light is coming from the right side, which would be the head or face of the pangolin. So as long as you keep that in mind, that the right side is the light side and the left side is the dark side, and you've got the shape somewhat okay, then you can make that pangolin any color you want, and I've chosen to use pinks and purples. So I'm using a knife to paint with, not a brush. So that's another reason for me to believe this is a no mistakes painting because you don't even need a cup of water to rinse in. You don't need to wash the brushes out. All you need is a knife and a paper towel. I've got an assortment of inexpensive plastic knives and one metal knife that comes to a point for the little spaces. But I'm using some of the wider knives to do the background. And if you've ever frosted a cake or made yourself a peanut butter sandwich, this should be fairly easy. All you do is spread the paint on. The back of the foliage or the farthest away part, if he's standing on grass or bushes, is lighter. So I'm going to go over it at the end of the background part with white to make the top part of the green look a little bit lighter so it recedes from you. Last Saturday, the 20th of February, was World Pangolin Day, and today, the 22nd, is International Wildlife Day. That's why I'm combining the two holidays into making a pangolin, which is my favorite endangered species and the most illegally trafficked animal there is. In the early 1990s, illegally trafficked black market pangolins sold for $20 to $40 a piece. But the going rate in 2011 was $400 to $600 a piece. Because of this increased black market demand, scientists figured that between 41,000 and 60,000 pangolins are stolen from the wild just during that one year of 2011. In the last decade, more than a million have been poached, and now they are critically endangered. Just imagine what this is doing to the balance of the world ecosystem since each individual pangolin catches and eats an estimated 70 million insects a year. I'm starting to put the paint on the scales of the pangolin now with the small, pointier, smaller knife. 
and I'm starting with the dark side. Each scale is hidden from the light by the scale on top of it. So I'm putting dark semicircles around where the, the scales would be hidden from the light, the far right hand side of each scale. And then later I'll be putting lighter colored paint on the left hand side of each scale, which is in the sunlight. I'm in the middle of writing and illustrating a children's picture book now set in Sumatra, which is one of the habitats of pangolins. And one of the characters in my book is a pangolin, but I've made the characters whimsical and funny, so the pangolin in my book is actually getting a pedicure. My philosophy in the stories in my children's picture books is not to make kids sad about the situation with endangered animals because there's nothing a young kid can do about the situation. So I just hope to make them fall in love with a pangolin or fall in love with an orangutan and then maybe they can do something about the situation when they grow up. So I keep the stories and the illustrations in my picture books whimsical and fun and adventurous but not sad. But when I'm doing a video for adults, which this is, I don't mind telling the backstory about the endangered status of the species, loss of habitat, um, people hunting and eating, wildlife, and so forth. These pangolins are particularly susceptible to poaching because traditional Asian medicines use powdered scales from pangolins, just like powdered horns from rhinoceros, to cure several diseases. It's mistakenly believed that there's magical curative powers in the scales of a pangolin. One of the reasons I like using gouache paints, in the, especially for these demos, is because I can change my mind many times during the course of the painting. The paint is opaque, which is different from watercolor. So you can pile one color on top of another, light over dark if you want, and keep changing your mind or changing the colors as many times as you want. That's why I call it no mistakes painting. So after I've gotten the darker paint in the shadow areas that you can't see in the light, I'll go back and add some white and make up some lighter paint, a lighter purple color to do the highlights of the scales, the parts that are in direct sunlight. And that way the pangolin starts taking shape dark paint in the shadows, light paint in the light. And after I get all the paint in, I see that I have covered up some of my shadows. Doesn't matter. I can go back with the darker paint and put in the shadows that somehow got lost in the lighter paint. One thing about gouache is that it is a re-wettable paint. If you're using acrylic, and it hardens on your palette, then you have to throw it away and start from scratch. But if you're using gouache and it hardens on your palette, you can spray it with water and get it wet again and start painting. So I like that fact that there's not as much waste since it is re-wettable. That also means that you can wash it out of your clothes, which you can't do with acrylic paint once it hardens. So now I'm putting in the light and then I go back and get a little bit more white and make a dab on each scale so you can see that it's in the light. But in order to define my shape a little bit more carefully because it's starting to blend together, again I say no mistakes, it's just I would like it to be more defined. So I'm taking a really darker blue and then I'm just going to put it over the back side of each leg, the back side of the tail. I'm saying this, when I say back side, I mean the side facing away from the sun. So I'm defining 
each leg and the tail with this darker paint. Also the side of the face so that it stands out as being a curved shape or a three-dimensional shape. And you can do that at the very end after you've finished your whole painting. Like I said, you can change your mind many, many times during the painting. No mistakes. Next time I do a painting like this of an animal, I'll try something a little bit different and maybe we will use a brush. But for today, there's no cleaning, no cleanup, just a paper towel to wipe your knife off. I hope you enjoyed this different way of painting. Piling paint on like you're frosting a cake or making a peanut butter sandwich. See you in the next video. Thanks. So I hope you enjoyed your two-part project and you've become a big fan of pangolins. They certainly need fans. So if you like this kind of video, drawing and painting with no mistakes, then subscribe to my channel and click on the little bell below so you'll be notified next time I post a video. Thanks.